Hello, welcome to Course 2, Unit 1, Lesson 1, What is Financial Risk? In this lesson, we have three lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is risk versus reward. The second lesson objective is what is the baseline value for risk and reward? And the third lesson objective is what causes financial risk in a business? So let's get started. So I'm sure everyone has heard before uh, risk versus reward. And so I have this little picture here to kind of demonstrate and something to kind of think about as you take on a more risky investment. On the left, we have a marginal amount of risk and reward on the, on the bar as the person's walking the tightrope. And over on the right-hand side, you can see that the person has taken on more risk for more reward. And what the result is, is that person has more pressure and more stress. And you can see how his tightrope is, is arching and bending there. And if he makes one little mistake as he's walking, it's going to be a total collapse of his investment. So kind of keep that in mind as you assess your risk versus reward. And so we know that our risk whenever we're investing in stocks and bonds is that you could lose a little bit or all of your money. And the reward is that you could make money and not really have to work for it very hard. So when we look at our tolerance of risk, over on the left-hand side, um, our number one, which would be our lowest amount of risk for the reward, is going to be our 10-year federal note. What that is is a bond, but it's a 10-year bond. And whenever you have something that short in, in term, it's actually called a note. So if you were talking 30 years, then that'd be called a bond. And then on the right, we kind of have a funny picture with the Ponzi scheme incorporated as our 10. So as you look at this chart, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to assess and think about the amount of risk that you're willing to assume for each and every investment. And you're always going to compare it back to that 10-year federal note. Now, the reason that we use the 10-year federal note is because the federal government can simply print more money in order to meet that obligation. And if you were going to take just simple cash, and let's just say you held $100 in cash for a 10-year period, that federal note is always going to outperform just the cash because you're going to be making a 2.2% yield as of 1 May on that federal note where the cash you'd be making absolutely nothing. So regardless of how inflation moves in the future, you're still going to be doing better with that federal note. And that's why we're going to use that as our benchmark to compare it to any other um, investment and the risk that's associated with any other investment. So what causes financial risk in an investment? We have three uh, risks that we're going to be talking about. The first risk that we're going to talk about is debt. When you start talking about stocks and bonds, it doesn't matter either one of those investments. But if the company or the local government has a lot of debt, that is an enormous risk to you as the owner of that company or as the person supplying the loan to that company. So when we look at why a company incurs debt, um, the reason that a company takes on debt is because they want to speed up time. That's, that's all it is. It's an instrument of speeding up time. If you think about it in this terms, if a person's going to go out and buy a $300,000 house and they're going to take out a loan in order to buy it, the reason that they're taking out that loan and incurring debt is because they want to speed up time. They don't want to wait 15 to 20 years in order to save up enough money to buy that home. Instead, they're going to take out the debt and they're going to go ahead and speed up time so they can move into that house right now. So when you talk about a business, it's exactly the same thing. Um, a company incurs a lot of debt or takes on debt because they want to speed up time. They want to have that machine in order to make that product today and they don't want to have to wait five years in order to save up enough money to buy it. So you might be thinking, well, why is that bad? So I might have a little bit of a lame example here, but I'm going to use it anyway to kind of maybe symbolically uh, represent what's, what's happening here. Um, let's assume that we're playing a video game. You have 30 seconds to shoot a little rat that's running across the screen. So on the far left, we're going to start off at a normal speed and let's say that in 30 seconds, 10 rats run across the screen. And since the rats are moving at a normal speed and you're good at the game, you can kill all 10 rats. As we speed up the, the speed of the rat, um, but we still have 30 seconds to shoot as many as we can, we actually had 14 targets that ran across the screen and we were able to shoot 12 of them, which was a little bit better than the normal speed. And then as we speed up the time, we have 18 rats in 30 seconds and now we only killed 10 because the rat's running faster and it's harder to shoot. And then we go to a ludicrous speed and we have 22 rats that run across in 30 seconds, but we were only able to kill six because the rats were moving so fast and it was really hard to shoot them. 
So in this example, in this silly example, we have the rat and the speed is representing the amount of debt that the company is taking on. So as that company is taking on more debt, the company is actually becoming less productive in the long run. And as you can see, it, with a little bit of debt and a manageable amount of debt, which would be the rat just gradually running a little faster, the company actually performed a little bit better. And so that's something that you need to think about. If a company has debt, that's fine. If a company has a lot of debt, that's not fine because that's uh, putting a lot of risk on you as an investor. And it always ends bad whenever you're investing in companies that incur a lot of debt. So you could maybe use this uh, silly little example to remember that as you look at your companies and you see a company that's incurring a lot of debt, that's the company you want to stay away from. They're becoming less productive instead of just sticking to that normal speed and maybe just going a little bit faster with a little bit of debt. So here's Warren Buffett's opinion on debt, and he uses this kind of silly quote uh, as an example. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. And what he means by this is the people who are out there swimming naked are the people who are, have a lot of debt. Um, and when the tide goes out, which means that the market collapses, that's when you truly figure out who's been swimming naked because those are the people that don't make it. They're, those are the companies that fail. So let's talk about our second risk. The second risk that you have as an investor is overpaying for an investment. So Warren Buffett's opinion on this is that price is what you pay, but value is what you get. So let me uh, give you an example. So let's assume that this man here uh, goes and sees this beautiful home. It's immaculate. Um, and he sees that the house is on the market for $200,000. But he likes this house so much, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's his dream home that he's willing to pay $50,000 over the listing price for the house. So one year later, after this man paid $250,000 for this house, he has to sell the house because he's going to be moving for a new job. So he's trying to sell the house, and he can't get anywhere near the price that he paid one year earlier. And that obviously comes as no surprise. So what we have to look at is that the house was still a great house. Nothing changed about this house. He still maintained it. He took great care of it. Something else that didn't change was the market condition. So when we look at this, the poor investment was based off the initial price paid and not the quality of the home. The home was immaculate and it was great, but the investor paid way too much for the house and that's why it was a poor investment. So when we look at how this investor overpaid for this house and he paid $250,000 for something that was worth $200,000, how is that any different than a person in the stock market buying a stock for $25 when it's only worth 20. And what I'll tell you is there's absolutely no difference. That ratio, $200,000 to $250,000 is exactly the same as paying $25 for something that's worth 20. And that's what Warren Buffett means and that's our second risk. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Okay, and the third risk associated with owning an investment is that risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. It's that simple. So when you looked at that last example, why do people value the ownership of a house but not value the ownership of a company? And what it comes down to is on the left, people understand that. They understand the value of the home. But when you look at the right, they don't understand the value of a company. And they definitely don't understand the value of the company when you break it down into individual shares that are broken up into 10 million pieces. And so that is the true risk here. And if, if you're the type of person that may be out there buying companies and, and buying shares, and you never look at what they're worth, and you're just buying them based off of, oh, I like this company, you're probably setting yourself up for buying the $250,000 house, even though it's worth $200,000. And this is what Warren Buffett really means. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. So let's recap our three risks. The first one is excessive debt. You want to stay away from those companies. A little debt's okay, but a lot of debt is always going to get you in trouble. Um, overpaying for an investment. You've got to know what the value of the investment is before you buy it, or else you're going to be the person out there buying the $250,000 home. And the third one is not knowing what you're doing. So just a quick recap. In the follow-on lessons, in the follow-on units as we continue forward, we're always going to be comparing the value of our stocks and our bonds back to the 10-year federal note. So it might not make sense right now, but as we continue on to the follow-on lessons, it'll all start becoming clear to you. So that completes Course 2, Unit 1, Lesson 1, What is Financial Risk? We learned about risk versus reward. We learned what is the baseline value for a risk and reward. 
and we learned what causes financial risk in a business. And I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you in the next unit.